Welcome back to another edition of Force Friday, where we talk about Star Wars theories, characters, concepts, comparisons, analyzations. And today we're going to be talking about lies, deception, Bogale knows the way. Where's the truth? Whatever it is. Well, some of the greatest Star Wars memes ever come out of history. That's what it is. But more importantly, we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite fanatical rebel, Saul Guerrero, who most people know from Rogue One, but prior to his 2016 live action reveal, had only one major appearance, the Clone Wars season five the Onderon arc consisting of the episodes A War of Two Fronts, Front Runners, The Soft War, and Tipping Points. Other major appearances do include Rogue One, but also Star Wars Rebels and Jedi Fallen Order. So let's get into the biography of Saul Guerrero, who I think is one of the most interesting Star Wars characters to be created within the last decade, or at least become popularized within the last decade, I suppose. How he has managed to kind of grow how we view Star Wars, especially the Rebels, and some of the kind of interesting trivia aspects to his character that maybe we're not all aware of. Guerrera grew up on the planet Onderon with his sister Stila inside the walls of the planet's capital. Onderon was ruled by a peaceful monarch who kept the planet neutral during the outbreak of the Clone War as to spare his people from harm. However, a year into the war, Separatist head of state Count Dooku ordered the invasion of Onderon, with the king replaced with a puppet leader. Onderon's public was divided by a sudden change of leadership, with Saul and Stila openly voicing their distaste to the new king, who banished them from the city and decreed any resistance to be an act of terrorism. Mm. Early markings of a terrorist. Two years later, Guerrera and his sister led a band of like-minded rebels from the jungle, but their lack of training and equipment led to them reaching out to the Jedi Council instead, who sent Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Ahsoka Tano, flanked by our dear Captain Rex, to train the insurgents. Guerrera was a young, untrained, headstrong and brash, but was still a caring soldier who genuinely wants the best for his homeworld. Another trait that I feel like resides throughout his character arc, even through to his insane and somewhat untimely demise. But when it came time for this band of rebels to elect a leader, they elected Stila, much to Saul's resentment. They eventually succeeded in ridding the planet of the Puppet King, but two major events that shaped Saul's life happened. One was his brutal torture at the hands of the Separatists during this ordeal, and two, the eventual death of his only family member and best friend Stila. These events left an immeasurable mark on Saul, who blamed himself for Stila's death, believing he had not gone far enough to win. Another element that goes on to shape him later in his life. When the Empire rose and began its expansion, Saul's rebels became known as the Partisans, and he continued fighting the Imperial regime. One particular incident mentioned in Star Wars Rebels had a Lassat mercenary hired by Guerrera brutally execute the wounded members of ISB, Agent Callus's team, who genuinely believed they were bringing peace to his planet. In this way, Guerrera had a role to play in the shaping of Callus from an idealistic young member of the Imperial military to a cunning and ruthless agent. And as we look at Saul's life, we begin to see a lot of events that take place early on in his life that go on to later shape how he turns out. One of the major parts of Saul's life was his suspicion of a large unknown project he suspected the Imperials of building. In Jedi Fallen Order, he and his rebels travel to Kashyyyk and are eventually forced to leave. At this point, Saul was getting closer to his brutal ways as seen in Rogue One, but still a valiant and brave soldier and also a level-headed leader. Within the novel Catalyst, he comes into contact with the Ursos, Galen and Lyra. Now, Galen, we know, was working on the Death Star, but he was doing this unknowingly because he thought he was working on a project that was creating sustainable energy. Saul helped them escape to the remote world of Lamu and later took in their daughter, Jen, when they were found by the Empire in the book Rebel Rising. Guerrera and Jen came to form a close bond with him training her as an insurgent. Jen saw Guerrera grow increasingly paranoid that his men would discover her true identity as the daughter of an imperial scientist, to the point that he began to torture his own men to ascertain what they knew. Jen was usually not allowed to accompany Saul on missions, and one particular one revealed his brutal ways to her as she witnessed him massacring an imperial governor, along with hundreds of innocent civilians, with weapons that fired hundreds of tiny blades that literally sliced apart their victims. He claimed he was forced to do this to send a message to the Empire, and it was yet another example of his belief that war should be won at any cost. Guerrera later abandoned Jen at age 16, leaving her with only a blaster and knife, pretending he would return for her. This left Jen utterly alone with a huge dislike of the rebels. Guerrera later had Imperial Moff Panaka, the same former 
former captain and now loyal Imperial governor seen in The Phantom Menace, bombed. In the Star Wars Rebels Season 3 episodes, Ghost of the Geonosis, Guerrera was stranded on the aforementioned planet after he and his men were ambushed by a young Geonosian, whose battle droids killed Guerrera's men. Now, Guerrera was there to investigate the disappearance of the planet's population. He was rescued by the Spectres, Kanan, Ezra, and Rex, but still treated the young Geonosian, who was one of the last surviving members of his race, and was reacting only out of fear with extreme suspicion. After escaping, he betrayed the Spectres, attempting to take the young Geonosian prisoner so he could torture him for information on what the Empire were building on Geonosis, and even threatened to destroy the last Geonosian egg, which would have rendered their species extinct. Eventually, he let the bug go, believing they deserved a chance to rebuild, but he did so reluctantly. He later appeared in Season 4 in a two-part episode which explored his break from the larger rebellion over his brutal tactics, and had him further investigating the Imperial project he did not know to be the Death Star. Years of fighting led to Guerrera becoming increasingly unhinged and paranoid. He lost a leg, acquired a crude mechanical one, and was forced to wear a pressurized suit to protect his lungs, which had been damaged from his time on Geonosis. His hair began to represent his mind, as it usually was kept shaved down, and now was growing wild and unkept. Learning that many kyber crystals were being mined on the moon of Jeddah, he relocated his forces there, where his raids on Imperials led to harsher and harsher reprisals, even relocating a Star Destroyer to hover over the city. His activities transformed the city into a war zone and led to massive casualties to the city's population. Guerrera's brutal tactics had no regard for civilian life and the damage of his insurgency can be seen in Rogue One. Imperial cargo pilot Bodhi Rook defected from the Empire and surrendered to Guerrera's forces under instructions from the long captive Galen Erso, who remembered Saul as a decent and fair man and believed he would help Bodhi get his information on the Death Star to the Alliance. Instead, the paranoid Guerrera believed Rook's defection to be a trick and tortured him. He was known to be so distrustful of the main Alliance that Cassian Andor believed he would simply kill anyone he believed to be working for them. This led to the Alliance rescuing Jen Erso and using her to get an audience with Saul. However, However, Jen and Saul's reunion was cut short when the Death Star fired on the moon. Saul, at the end of his rope, a portion of the man he used to be, both mentally, emotionally, and even physically, urged Jen to flee and stood to face the death that approached him. The Marvel comic adaptation revealed his last words to be Stila as he met his death. And that concludes the story of Saul Guerrero. But there's so much to dig our teeth into. For one, I love the tool that Saul serves, tying different eras of Star Wars together. He is from the Clone Wars era. An era that, thanks to Palpatine, is largely defined by the amount of deceit in the galaxy, even to include a Sith Lord posing as a senator to become an emperor and destroy what we know of the galaxy. Growing up in this period and living during the Clone Wars, Saul himself becomes exposed to numerous levels of deceit, some of which at the very hands of the political parties that exist on his own home world. But minor influences began to affect that as well, such as his own people choosing another leader over him when he he viewed himself to be the most qualified. But at every turn that he took lied half a mystery that revealed itself to be something bigger or at least something it didn't seem to be. And these steps start to create this character that is extremely distrusting and later evolves into something extremely paranoid. Now, while he's on Geonosis, it plays with the idea that during the Clone Wars, the planet was basically bug sprayed to kill off the Geonosian species, probably in part due to Palpatine trying to cover his footsteps of the plans that he had laid years before. And while Saul is investigating this very act of deceit, he is in some ways crippled by the side effects of breathing in the very fumes he went there to investigate in a manner of speaking. Now during this period as he's building his crew, what I love that he does as he ties himself in to the original trilogy era is he makes the rebellion complicated. Prior to this, we pretty much see the rebellion as the good guys. Star Wars in the late 70s and 80s was a pretty simple concept, good guys and bad guys. What Saul does is cast this wide shade of gray over top of the rebellion. Then not all aspects of the rebellion were equal, nor were they heroic in all their factions. Now, Rogue One does a good bit of this with Cassian in this sort of black ops order, but it also does it with Saul, who represents this extreme, fanatical, almost zealot type rebel that thins the line between freedom fighter and terrorist and adds to a deeper layer of philosophical discussion in regard to the intention, motives, and effectiveness of the rebellion itself. Plus, he rolls with two two tubes, which are some of my favorite looking characters in Star Wars ever, and I wish somebody would make a 112 scale figure of them for me to buy. And that's kind of the beauty of Saul's character. Now let's talk about some of the behind the scenes stuff. Despite being 
Making his first appearance in any medium, Saul was actually not a Clone Wars original character. He was created by George Lucas for the unproduced Star Wars live-action TV show, Underworld. Guerrero's role in this is largely unknown. The show was to take place in the lower levels of Coruscant during the time between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. And Guerrero was to demonstrate the more extreme side of the Rebellion, so that at least stayed pure. His Clone Wars arc sees a cell of local warriors being trained by a Jedi as part of a plan to train local fighters to fight the Separatists where the Republic could not. Lucas envisioned these cells as being the precursors to the Rebel Alliance, and when characters were needed, Lucas suggested Guerrera. His sister Steela was created to be a foil for the series' arguable protagonist, Ahsoka Tano. Saul's home planet of Onderon first appeared in the Tales of the Jedi and Knights of the Old Republic comic series and was brought into the show by Dave Filoni. His name, obviously, is an intentional play on the real-life revolutionary Shea Guevara. During the writing of Rogue One, it was obvious that they they needed something to represent an extreme faction of the Rebellion. The then head of Lucasfilm story group, Kiri Hart, suggested Guerrera for this character. Forrest Whitaker played him in the film and all subsequent appearances. He's mentioned watching the Clone Wars arc to learn more about the character and by interviews seems to know it extremely well. In the film, Guerrera wears a flag of Onderon, seen in the Clone Wars as a cape. He is one of the first examples of the Clone Wars becoming a more referenced show in the larger Star Wars world of movies and series, a trend that has only continued. Most notably, he's also the the first animated character to make the leap to live action. Rogue One was a film that underwent extensive reshoots and Guerrero's role, while roughly the same in theme as before, is believed to have been largely changed. Exact specifics are few and far between as the film saw very few leaks. He shared scenes with a 14-year-old Jen with his, what will you do if they catch you? What will they do in your head? All that bit from the trailer, if you recall. Line from the film's first trailer being from one such scene. Many believe his hairstyle in the film was only in the reshoots, meaning all but one of his scenes was reshot. Several of the partisan soldiers Soldiers can be seen on the Scarif beaches and behind the scenes for Rogue One, but were completely cut from the movie. His scenes are in some ways disconnected from the rest of the plot, and it's probable he played a larger role before reshoots, with him, or at least his men, returning to help Jin on Scarif. Pablo Hidalgo was noted to have implied that his role changed very much throughout the development, and Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy said that Lucasfilm had big plans for Saul as a character prior to the film being released, which is a bummer, because then I would have had two tubes going to work on Scarif, which would have been great. In terms of collectibles, they've been very limited. We've yet to get a Black Series representation of many key characters from Rogue One, including Saw. No Hot Toys hints in the future. And the only figure that I've seen is the three and three quarter Saw Guerrera that came in a massive box set that most people skipped out on because at the end of the day, it wasn't worth it financially. However, for me, I got it because two tubes was in it. But I think Saw is one of those characters that'll always play the background and only people that get heavy into this stuff will realize the contribution that he really makes to the saga as a whole by tying the different eras together and painting the picture of various rebels rising up in the galaxy, largely in defense of their own planets. Having little to no communication with one another, but slowly coming together over two decades, Guerrero represents a side of the rebellion that is basically terrorism. His brutal tactics and unhinged demeanor were meant to demonstrate what a lifetime of fighting and countless losses could do to a person, and what it does is destroy him completely, both mentally and physically. There's an awful lot represented Presented in this character that most don't take the time to realize, but he's one of the most intriguing and interesting elements added to Star Wars in the later years. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.